Hello and welcome to lesson 21, Geometric Recursion. This is the forgotten lesson because unfortunately we didn't get a chance to go through this lesson um, because school was cancelled on a Monday and this would be on a Tuesday. Also, I'm presenting to you from my study of my home. So yeah, uh, things aren't ideal. If a dog runs in here, please ignore it. Don't worry about it. Um, let's get started um so what i'm going to do first is i'm going to go back a couple of slides to what we were doing last time and talk about how that relates to geometric recursion our lesson goal today is we will be able to to use recursion on compound interest so that's going to make a little bit more sense um because essentially geometric recursion is really good at dealing with compound interest whereas um, arithmetic, arithmetic recursion is really good for dealing with um, simple interest. So let's back up a second and we'll go back all the way back to lesson 20. Now, what we were doing in lesson 20 is we were looking at linear recursion. Now, the whole idea of linear recursion is it deals with simple interest. So how does it do that? Well, how it does that and we had these sequences, T0 being the first one, all the way up, a second was T1, and then Tn was just some number, n, it's the nth place. So, we talked about how linear recursion is this idea here. Linear um, growth and decay is a sequence where the quantity increases or decreases by the same amount each time. Because it's increasing by the same amount, if we look here, then that means it's going to be a linear increase, a straight up increase. Now, how it does that is using, um, recursion uses this kind of formula here. Now, just a quick refresh on this, V0 is our starting value. Whereas and Vn plus 1 is going to mean our next value. But Vn is our current value. So what this sort of says is to find Vn, I've just got to, to find this Vn plus 1 number, I've just got to take my Vn and add 150. So the example that we had down here, which was user recursion relationships, um, after one, two, and three years, we said, well, let's just do this working out down the bottom here. Um, for V1, that's going to be V0 plus 150. V0, we know, is 2,000. 2,000 plus 150 is 2,150. Great, beautiful. Just for one more, V2 is V1 plus 150. Now, where? how do I know this? Because if I look back up here, Vn plus 1. This is Vn is 1, and Vn plus 1 is going to be 2. So I just add 150. And he comes on next to come say hi. Hopefully he doesn't bark. So then that's going to be 2,150 plus 150 is going to be 2,300. And that's how we could do that same thing to find V3 and so on and so forth. Now, again, this is called linear because we're always increasing by the same amount. Okay. Now, let's look at, we can do the same thing with um, subtracting a value. In this case, it's again still linear because we're subtracting this same negative 150 each time. And with this one, the advantage is we can keep doing it until we get to zero. Now, what I showed you guys is you're able to do this on your calculator. So what you can do is you can put in the starting value, for example, 18500. Yep. And then you go equals. And it gives you the end. And then what you do is you go answer minus 1850. Now what that does is it says, well, you take your current answer. You minus the new answer, we minus 1850, and that will give you a new one. So after one, it's going to be 1650. And you can keep going down. So we can go 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 
10 and we're down to 0. So that's 10 years. Um, we can do this, it's fine, it's great, but is there a short? And we can sort of see here in this idea that we can see that this is the, for example, Vn equals Vn plus 1 equals Vn um, plus 50. So we can sort of see here that if you were to take V0 as being 1,000, V1 would be 1,000 plus 50. V2 would be 1,000 plus 50 plus 50 because this is V1. And therefore, this is V2. We can sort of see we're just adding 50 each time, which brings us to this formula here. And we're going to use this formula a fair bit. The formula or rule is the next number is always the current number. The next number is you take the number plus d, where d is going to be linear. Remember, d can be positive or negative. And so that means if you have v naught, you add n number of times it's happened, you multiply that by d. Let's look at what happens here. For example, v4. That's going to be v naught plus 4 times d. And here's 1, 2, 3, 4 times d. That's way how this formula works. And then you can use that formula to apply to something like this, because if you were to try and add 15 years, it would just take a long time. But because we have this now, we can just go v15 equals v0 plus 15 times d. In this case, d was 260, and v0, v0 is, is 4,000, so bringing those guys in, we've got 4,000 plus 15 times 260. And that's going to give us, give me a second, 4,000 plus 15 times 260 equals 7,900. You can rearrange this formula, formula to find out other value, other things like C here, how much would and the investment would be worth more than 10,000, you would just substitute 10,000 into, and you find out what number n is. So it's like, what is n? So we just have to rearrange that. Now I'm not going to go through how to do those, because I did that in the very last lesson, but if uh, you don't remember how to do those, send me an email and I can go through how to do part C. But what we're going to jump ahead to now is geometric sequences. Oh, by the way, today's lesson practice got to do blackjack because it's lesson 21, 21, blackjack. Blackjack is it's kind of interesting. It's the most widely played casino game. I used to really get confused about blackjack because I'm like, surely it'd be easy to count the cards. The reason it's so hard to count the cards in blackjack is because they have multiple decks. And that's sort of interesting. 20, it's called 21 because Jack aces can be worth one or eleven, and jacks are always and face cards are always worth ten. So you want to try and get to twenty one. But yeah, it's it's a game where you can count the cards, and if you're good enough, you can sort of use that to predict it. Always win, but then you get thrown out. It's not illegal, but it's kind of frowned upon if you do it. And the casinos have the right to kick you out for no reason. Anyway, sorry. Down to the actual business. So. Geometric is different from arithmetic, and we're going to look at how geometric uses this idea of recursion, okay, and how what how that links to this new idea of compound interest. Because if we remember, linear goes up like this, but compound shoots up really, 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 really quickly. It has exponential growth, whereas um, yeah, whereas simple just just as linear growth. So let's talk about how these things work. So geometric growth and decay. Geometric growth and decay is a sequence where the quantity increases or decreases by an increasing amount each time. That means it shoots up. It gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Growth can be can model compound interest or reducing balance. Can also, uh, of course, geometric growth can also approximate things like 
the spread of a virus through a population because if one person infects two people, that person then goes and infects those people, go infects four people, and so on and so forth. So, and this, these things do actually help us understand a lot of interesting things. So, if you can see on this graph here, see this blue line here over here? That blue line that represents um, geometric growth, it's getting bigger, faster, and faster, and faster. Whereas this red line is a solid, straight line, it does not go up at a great speed. Now, it can this can help us model compound interest, but reducing balance is sort of like the compound interest of depreciation. An example of that might be worth, it might be something like, um, so let's just say you've got something like a car. Let's say you buy that car initially and it's like $10,000. Then after one year, it drops to 5,000. Then it drops to 2,500. Each time it's getting half, it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller. The idea is, is that it won't actually get to zero. It won't get to zero, but it will get smaller and smaller and smaller until pretty much it's zero, it pretty much has no worth. But it doesn't, it gets, initially it's, it drops a lot and then up as time goes on it drops a smaller and smaller and smaller amount. Okay, so what does this look like mathematically? So let's go have a look at this example here. So in this example here, um, the following recurrence relation can be used to model a compound interest investment of $1,000 paying interest at a rate of 8% per annum. Using the same ideas that we've just done, V0 is 1,000. So that's our initial, that's again the starting value. We start at, at this value. But this time, the next value is not the same as the previous before. The next value is 1.08 times the current value. Sorry, that arrow should be pointing here. Now, let's, before we even tackle this problem, let's have a look at what that means. If we said the VN is would be VN, what we're essentially saying is, if we said it was VN was one time, VN plus one was one times VN, right? What would that mean? Well, that would mean there's no growth. That would mean that if that we started with 1,000, um, the next value would be one times 1,000, which is 1,000. So if we, this number is one, there's absolutely no growth at all. Let's look at a different example though. What happens if we had Vn plus 1 is actually equal to, let's choose something like 2 times Vn. Well, in this case, what we would have is we'd actually end up with, sorry, what we would have is we'd have something along the lines of, okay, we go from Vn plus 1 is 2 times 1,000. So Vn, well, we'll say we'll, we'll say V1, sorry. V1 is 2 times 1,000. So V1 is 2,000. And then V2 is going to be um, 2 times V1, which is going to be 2 times 2,000. So it's going to be 4,000. And the idea is we can see with this one, we're going from 1,000 to 2,000 to 3,000. It's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Well, actually, sorry, 4,000. And then the next one would be 8,000. It's getting bigger. So when this number here is 2, when that's more than 1, it gets bigger. And it gets bigger... Um, 
at an exponential rate. And the reason it's getting here between an exponential rate and not a linear rate is because we're increasing by different values. This one we went up by 1,000, then we went up by 2,000, then we went up by 4,000. The last example, of course, would be is if we had, well, what happens? Uh, this is going to get very small, but what happens is Vn plus 1 equals a half of Vn. Well, in this case, V1 would be a half of V0, which would be V1 is going to be a half of 1,000, which is 500. V2 is going to be a half of V1, which is equal to a half of 500. So V2 is going to be 250. We can see with this one, we're going down. So quicker, quicker, quicker. So this one we're going from 1,000 to 500 to 250 to 125 and so on. So this, that example there is, um, it's getting, uh, when it's getting smaller, faster and faster and faster. Okay. Um, just give me a sec. Okay, so let's get back to the actual question. You, so we look, we've got V0 is 1,000, we've got Vn plus 1 is this value here. And we're going to use this to calculate 1, 2, and 3. Okay, well, let's look at V1. V1 is going to be V0 is going to be 1.08 times V0. I don't need a calculator for this one because I'm just going 1.08 times V0, which is 1,000, which is going to be 1080. Done. Beautiful. That's for the one-year investment. Well, what's going to be V2? V2 is going to be 1.08 times V1, which is going to be 1.08 times 1080. Now, this one I'm going to need to get a calculator around. I'm actually going to use the same technique that I did before. I'm going to show you how I do that. So I'm going to type in 1,000 equals, excuse me, 1,000. And then I'm going to go 1.08 times the answer. I'm going to leave this up here for a second so you guys can see that. Now, what happens is if I do that, I get 1080. I do that again, I get 1166.4. So, with 1166.4, okay, one sec. Okay. So the next one, V3, is going to be the same thing again. V3 equals 1.08 times V2, which is going to be 1.08 times 1166.4. And I'm just going to put equals again on my calculator. And that's 1259.4. Okay, so that's 1259. It doesn't look like much like geometric uh, increase yet, but what we're doing is you can sort of see it's like okay, this one went up by, this one went up by 80, this one went up by 160.166, so that went up by 86, and so on. It's going to get go up fast and fast and faster. When will the investment reach 1,500? Well, let's just push uh, equals again. That's 1,300, so it's four years, five years, six years. There we go. So for B, it's after six years. Okay, so um, that's the basics and how to do those things. And it's, so this is a really good way to deal with... Um, you might think to yourself, well, this doesn't look anything like um, compound interest. And I would say, well, you c I can definitely sort of see why you might see that. Let's think about what compound interest 
after one year, uh, what we're doing with comp, reason this is similar to compound interest is because each year, each year, V1, V2, V3, we're multiplying by this, which is of course the rate plus one, but we're not multiplying the original value, we're multiplying this new value. And it's going to become a lot clearer why this is really closely linked to compound interest in a second. So let's jump ahead to um, this guy here. So this is a reducing balance file. I'm going to do this quite quickly. Um, so it says a car is purchased at 8500 The following recurrence relationship can be used to model the car's value as it depreciates by 10% of its original value each year. So you can see, well, why is this 0 0.9? Because, of course, 100% minus 10% equals 90%, which is the same as 0 0.9. That's where that 0 0.9 comes from. Let's do this. So V1 is going to be 0 0.9 times 1 8, um, sorry, times V0. Let me just put V0, which is going to be 0 0.9 times 1 8, oopsies, 1 8 5 0 0, which is going to be, and again, same idea in my calculator, 1 8 5 0 0 in the calculator, beautiful, equals, and then I go 0 0.9 times the answer, and that will give me the very first one. That's one six six five zero. Now the idea of this is to sort of compare, use the same. For those of you that are really, really paying attention, I'll show you in a second. You can actually compare this type of. Oops, one two many zeros. One six six five. It actually compares to the other example we did before. So that means that I'm just going to push equals again. Yeah. Done, cool, skipping a few steps here. V2 equals equals 0 0.9 times V1 equals 0 0.9 times 16650. And that's going to be 14985. I'm going to actually skip everything here and just do V3. Because we know already how how this works. So V3 is going to be, I'll do it anyway, 0 0.9 times V2 equals 0 0.9 times 14985, which is going to give us 13486.5. 13486.5. Now, why did I say this is similar to what we did before? So if I go back, so let's remember this number, 18500. If I go back now to here, notice this is the same number, 18500. This time we're increasing by a linear amount. We're decreasing, and this is still 10%, right? We're decreasing by 10% each time, okay? And I can't remember, I think we said this is about, this was 10 years it took to, to drop to zero. So it was decreasing by 10% each time. So if I compare this now to our new example, where we're decreasing by, we're decreasing by 10% each time again, but this time we decrease by 10% at the start, but then we keep decreasing by 10% of their value. So when will the car be worth less than $10,000? Well, we can do the same process. Three times gets us to one, three, four, eight. Um, so if I go, let me do this again really quickly. One, eight, five, zero, zero, zero point nine times the answer. So there is, there's one, there's two, there's three, there's four, 
There's five, almost, to six. After six years, it'll be worth less than 10,000. After six years. Now, we don't need the exact time, at least not with this question. I just wanted to show you in general how to do it. But yeah, let's keep powering on and we can see. So now we've talked about how to solve the questions using the calculator, just using recurrence. And then remember, this is what recurrence means. Recurrence means going over and over and over and over again. But let's now look at what this one means in a similar way to how we did arithmetic. Let's see if we can find a formula. So with this one, let's take V0 being 1,000. So grab look, V1 is 1.5 times 1,000. So this would mean that Vn plus 1 is 1.5 times Vn. So here's Vn, Vn plus 1 is 1.5 times that. Great, cool. This is where this comes up. Well, look at this. This is actually this here. So this here is V1. So V2, which is, is actually going to be V2, because it's 1.5 times V1, turns into 1.5 times 1.5 times 1,000. Then V3, which is technically V2, uh, 1.5 times V2 well look at that here is I'm going to use a different color here's V2 because that's all V2 and then here inside that inside that here that's V1 but we can start to see this. We've got one, two, three copies of 1.5. Here we've got one, two, three, four copies of 1.5. But instead of adding them, which we did before, what we're doing is we're multiplying them. Now, is there a way that we can, hmm, is there a way we can multiply, say how many times we multiply by the same thing? If you're not yelling, hey, raise it to a power, then, then you've missed the point. But that's what I'm trying to say. Grab a look at the first one. This is 1.5 to the power of 1 times 1,000. Yeah, so what? This guy has two of them. So it's 1.5 raised to the power of 2 times 1,000. This one is... 1.5 raised to the power of 3 times 1,000 because there's 1, 2, 3, 1.5s. And then, of course, the bottom one is 1.5 times 10 to the power of 4. So, how can this help us come to an actual equation? Well, let's grab a look at the formula. Um... Give me a second. So this is our formula. And this is the formula that will actually help us solve it. And if you look at this formula, we've got this Vn plus 1 is Vn times R. And remember, this R, the idea of R is, of course, well, when R is, R is the geometric pattern. It tells us how much it's going up and down by. So. Let's now grab a quick look at the actual formula. The formula has R risen to the power of N. Now, the reason that R, ooh, sorry, um, the reason that R is risen to the power of N is because if we remember back on this slide, it's how many times I've multiplied it by 1.5. So, in this example here, I don't know why it keeps flashing like that for. It's kind of really, really annoying. I'm just going to... One... Anyway, so... Yeah. 
So the idea is the power comes from this power here. And that comes from the fact that we're multiplied by 1.5 three times. So when we look at this, that's why we have the n here. That means that we've got Vn is just r times r times r, however many r's there are, all the way up to V0. And that here is n. And hopefully now you can see this is exactly why it leads to compound interest being a great way. Because this R is actually 1 plus the raid risen to the power of N. And then you can sort of see, well, if I put that's T, and if I put a, this V naught here, that V naught here, that's going to become the principal. And you can sort of see that's why it works. But let's just focus on this formula here for the meantime. How can we use that formula? Well, we're going to do one example. And the reason we're only going to do one is because if you look at the other way, if you look at shrinking the value, it's pretty much the same mathematics. So let's go have a look at this. The following recursion relation can be used to model a compound interest investment of $1,000, paying interest at a rate of 10% per year. So let's go have a look at this. Why have we got 1.1 here instead of 10%? Because remember, we take the 100%. We add the 10%. That gives us 110% or 1.1. Um, that's also why you've got R divided by 100. That's how that becomes. That's the same idea. So... Now that we've got this, let's say use the rule to find the value of the investment after 15 years, correct, to the nearest dollar. So that means we want to know what V15 is. To work out what V15 is, what we would do is we'd say, well, that's going to be R to the power of 15 times V0. In that case, the R is going to be 1.1, so 1.1 to the power of 15 times 1,000. And if I go 1.1 to the power of 15 times 1,000, Looking something like this, I get this number here. So 4177.28. You can also use this to figure out other things. We could figure out well when when is it gonna reach V when is VN gonna reach let's say ten thousand? When is going to get to $10,000 worth of value. You would put 10,000 equals R to the power of N times V naught. Now the reason that we're not going to do this one is because you would then need to figure out, well, how you would then need to do some logarithms and stuff like that to figure that out. So we're not going to worry about this guy here. Let's have a quick look at one where the geometric sequence is shrinking instead. And then we'll compare that. Let's grab a look at this guy. So, the following recursion relation can be used to model the reducing balance of an item of $5,000, losing 15% per year. We start at $1,000 again. We could have started at a different value. But this time, because we're using 15, 100 minus 15 equals um, 0 point, uh, well, one less than 0 0.85, 85 divided by 100 gives you 0 0.85. The reason that we're minusing is because it's reducing. Reducing means we minus it. So, use a rule to find the value of the item after five years. Now, we could do this just 
going times 0 0.5 times 0 0.5 times 0 0.5 but let's look at the actual rule and how that might work so again um, we've got this case we've got v5 now the v5 is just going to be r risen to the power of 5 times v naught because of course vn equals equals r risen to the power of n times v naught that's where that start comes from r in this case is 0 0.85 because it's less than it's less than one meaning it will get smaller and smaller and smaller if i multiply that by a thousand that's going to give me 0 0.85 risen to the power of 5 times by 1000 here sorry gives me 443 it's 443 and this might be used for something like This might be used for something like, you know, oh, you buy a laptop that's worth a thousand dollars. How much is that laptop going to be worth in five years? Because it loses its value because it's not the top of the line laptop anymore. Maybe a phone or something. So that's, and if you're a business, this is why you care about it. Anyway, so this is how, this is how we approach geometric recursion. Ultimately, geometric recursion is the main idea that I tried to get across to you guys is geometric recursion is V n plus 1 equals R times V n. You're changing the value, but not by adding this time by the same amount, by multiplying. And because of that, that leads to a curve that shoots up an exponential curve, not a flat curve. That's what the difference here is. And the formula... Because we've got R times R times R times R times R, what you can do is you can then say, well, therefore, v, um, Vn is just going to be R risen to the power of N times V naught. Now, if you've had any problems with anything that I've explained, please feel free to email me and let me know. This stuff will be on the test when we come back, so if you've got some problems. But you guys should be now more than equipped to finish off the 8H, which is what I think was set after this. Um, yeah, so 8H, which looks at both geometric and linear recursion. So that's what you guys should be finishing off now as well in your own time and then looking at in the um, revision away. Um, I've been Mr. Greer. If you need any help, please send me an email. Thank you. And